Hi friends! Today is going to be my wrap up for the month of June. In the month of June, I read a total of four books for 1,232 pages. I didn't do great in June. I had intentions to do a couple of readathons and do some vlogging for arc reading that I was supposed to do. Yeah, none of that happened. Like, absolutely none of it. I don't know what happened in June, but it wasn't reading. Let's start with the first book, which was a reread, and that is Our Chemical Hearts by Crystal Sutherland. Crystal Sutherland writes some of the most peculiar books, but I love them. They are very whimsy. This book actually has a recent adaptation that has not released yet that will be released on Amazon Prime starring Lily Reinhart, and I believe it's just titled Chemical Hearts. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars on my original read. I did not feel the need to change that with a reread. This book follows Henry Page in his senior year of high school when he is expected to be the editor of his school's newspaper. And the very first day, instead of being the editor, he ends up being a co-editor with a new student who, in Henry's own description, basically looks like um, a crack addict. And she is kind of a very scary person. She has this persona about her that is larger than life. And the book kind of follows the two of them in, I don't want to say like in a romance, but it's kind of a romance. Basically, the book talks a lot about, especially towards the end of the book, which is what I really love. It talks about um, chemistry and the way that our our bodies, our minds, our hearts kind of connect one another and how it doesn't necessarily always do that at the best time in our lives. And I love the characters in this book. I love Grace, who is the love interest. And I think Grace's character best speaks for itself. I think learning about Grace and the reveal and everything as the story progresses is one of the most beautiful things about this book. And I feel like as a reread, I didn't lose any of that. Like, even though I knew everything that was going on, I don't feel like I lost any of that, the feeling that you get from the reveals in this book. I highly, highly enjoyed this. I highly recommend it. I highly recommend all of Crystal Sutherland's work. It's only two books at this point, but there's more stuff coming out very soon. I'm very excited. Um, yes, read this. We shall then go to the lowest rated work our way up to the highest rated. Uh, it's it's not real low because my lowest rated book was The Guinevere Deception, and I gave this a four out of five stars. This is an Arthurian retelling. It follows Guinevere as she is sent to Camelot to marry Arthur and just kind of how their story comes together. It's a very interesting story because in this book, Guinevere is actually a changeling who is someone with magic and was sent to help Arthur and to protect Arthur by Merlin, who has been banished from Camelot. I thought there was some really great character work in this. I liked the way that the characters kind of progressed throughout the story. I love the world building, the way that the town was set up and you get to see like how the people live in the town. And I enjoyed that aspect of it. I think for me, the part that I didn't absolutely love was the plot. I felt like some parts were very stagnant and that they didn't really progress the plot as much as they could. But overall, I really enjoyed the book. I'm excited for the sequel. I think that with me, Kirsten White is either a hit or miss author. Um, you know, some stuff I've DNF'd and some stuff I five star. So this was definitely on the hit end for me. I really enjoyed it and I highly recommend. Then we have Grave Maidens by Kelly Kuhn. This book follows Kamani, who is an apprentice healer under her father. Their entire family was cast out of the royal type of life when her father failed to heal an heir to the throne and the current king and ruler I don't think he's a king but he's a ruler the current ruler is dying and when the ruler dies they are expected to be sent into the afterlife with these three grave maidens which are essentially young women who are chosen to be locked in the tomb with the dead ruler and to kill themselves so that the dead ruler can have women to take care of him in the afterlife. Yay. 
in this book, Kamani's young sister, Nenea, is chosen as a grave maiden. And so Kamani takes it upon herself to heal the ruler so that her sister doesn't have to die. And neither do the other young girls that have been chosen. The story has a lot of twists and turns. I ended up giving it a 4.25 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. It kind of just meanders along. And that kind of was the thing about it that I didn't love is that I feel like the pacing was off a little bit, but I really loved the characters. I really loved Kamani and Nenea. I like the realness of um, the girls that were chosen as grave maidens, their progress from being chosen, which is considered a an honor in their world and the way that they progress from that chosen honor to the end of the book is I feel very realistic for that age bracket, that character type, what's happening. I enjoyed Kamani's character, her love interest, Dagon. He is the absolute sweetest cinnamon roll. I love him. I just, I love him. He's great. Um, her best friend, I can't remember. Her best friend is a great character as well. You really see their friendship and how the two of them have grown over the years. Um, she has a younger brother who you see not n nearly as much as I would like, but I understand why you don't see him as much. It's part of the plot. I get it. I really enjoyed the world building. I love the way that the world was put together, the realness of a kingdom that would sentence young women to death because the king is dying. The other things that they're doing also make sense. All I can tell you is by the end of this, I was so happy that I have an arc of the following book, War Maidens, which I believe this is just going to be a duology. Um, yeah, I'm super excited that I have an arc because I'm going to need to read that very soon. The final book that I read this month was White Fragility by Robin DeAngelo. I read this as part of Books with Shay's Blackout Buddy Read. I have finished White Fragility. I do still need to finish White Rage, but as I said, I haven't been doing a lot of reading, so working on that still. But I did finish White Fragility, and I rated it a 5 out of 5 star, but I feel like I rated, as it is a nonfiction, I decided to rate it the same as I rate poetry collections, which is, did I get something out of it? So I feel like I gained something from it and therefore rated it five stars. I don't think that it was perfect. I dislike the use of the N-word, even though she was using it in a context of an exact quote by someone. I feel like for people who are reading it, who... I feel like this book is geared towards white people. And so if you're reading it in that context written by another white person who's trying to tell you about racism, I feel like that makes it okay for you to say the word or for you to think that it's okay for you to say the word, basically. So I, I disagree with that aspect of it. But overall, I think I did take a lot from it. I think, I think this is a great book for people who are starting looking into racism in America. I learned a lot of things that I didn't know already, which is weird because I feel like I have been a very open person about race in my life. And so it was interesting the things that I hadn't seen because I thought that I had seen a lot. And so the information of seeing things that I hadn't seen was very interesting. And I think, especially if you are a woman, that this book kind of relates it in a way that will help you understand better. I don't think, like, because while I can empathize with someone of color, I can't understand what they go through. I can empathize, but I can't understand. And I'll never be able to understand because that's not my position. But I think that when Robin explains things kind of in the same style of the women's suffrage movement, which is a movement that I can understand, that I have experienced sexism, I think though sexism and racism are different entities, and I think racism is much worse than sexism ever could have dreamed of being, I think that explaining it in a way that basically says, you know, you're being judged based off of something that you have no control over. I think explaining it in that aspect is a really good way to kind of put us all on the same playing field to learn. 
and then move from there. So I did like that aspect of it. I did agree with a lot of the things that she said. There are so many things that I have seen in my everyday life, especially the middle-aged white woman thing. I mean, I'm a 33-year-old white woman, so middle-aged white women are, you know, I'm about there in that bracket. Um, you know, my mom's generation are definitely the typical middle-aged white woman that is explained in this book. Um, I've definitely seen a lot of what was talked about. So I think I learned a lot. I think it's a good place to start. I won't say it's, you know, the only book you should read about racism in America, but I think it's a good starting point. And I think it will kind of explain things to you in a way that as a white person who has been able to live their life with white privilege and the white supremacist society that we live in. And yes, it is a white supremacist society. And if you disagree with that, that's because you don't understand what white supremacy means. I think it's a great place to start. So these are three of the four books that I read in June. Let me know in the comments below if you have read any of these. If you are interested in reading any of these, if you have any questions about anything that I read, please let me know in the comments below. That's why we're here. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, and book related videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, bonus videos on the weekends when I'm actually following my schedule. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you subscribe to both of my channels. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!